Hi everyone and let's have a look at nutritional requirements and dietary needs. This stuff will be great when you're looking at your assignment, particularly questions two and three where you're starting to look at energy and its association with eating and exercise. So we know food is made up of nutrients and those nutrients can be carbohydrates, they can be protein, vitamins and minerals, dietary fiber, fats and of course water. So what are carbohydrates? Carbohydrates are basically your starchy foods, so your pastas, your potatoes, your rice, and uh, they provide your primary source of fuel. So when your body wants to create energy so it can move around, it is going to burn whatever carbohydrates it's consumed. It's its favorite thing to eat and to burn off. Um, it is worth noting, however, that carbohydrates don't last very long. So we often find if we do an exhaustive activity like swimming, that uh, we are going to want to then eat lots of food and carbohydrates are something that we'll find we are craving. So. We then have protein. Proteins are the building blocks for our body. They are responsible for replacing all those things like uh, blood cells, muscle fibers, enzymes, hormones, skin and hair. So it's really important that we consume protein on a regular basis, whether it be meat or eggs or fish or even things like nuts. We need to be aware that um, Protein is often uh, skipped over. So a lot of people recommend, a lot of dietitians recommend having a nice healthy breakfast that happen to be eggs um, and bacon and things like that. So it's having a good think about that for your breakfast part of your menu. Vitamins and minerals. There's so many different vitamins. There's uh, vitamin C, which I'm sure you've all heard of before. It's one, probably the more, most popular one. Uh, but there's lots of vitamins and minerals. And uh, you'll find that if you're clever when picking food for people and yourself, you want a variety of different colours when it comes to veggies and fruit. Uh, because different vitamins tend to congregate around different colours. And... Uh, they all do little different things in terms of how your body functions, but generally, as a general rule, they help regulate our metabolism, which helps us determine how our body's going to process everything. Dietary fibre, on the other hand, is something that doesn't quite digest as well as it should, doesn't quite break down. Um, there's lots of jokes about, you know, corn. Um, I'll leave that to you. To work out but let's be honest dietary fiber does an important role in terms of helping our intestines process what's coming through fats now fats get a bad rap sometimes and we all and some people go oh no we don't want a lot of fat in our diet but there's a, actually you want lots of good fat and not so much the bad fat so we want to say yes to things like monosaturated and polyunsaturated fats. Say yay, let's have those things. But we want to try and cut back on the saturated fats and the trans fatty acids. You know, those donuts that have got lots of trans fatty acid um, versus um, our avocados, which are a great source of really good fat. Um, and we use fats for energy as well, so it's worth noting that. Now, if you've got your textbook, you may want to have a little squiz at pages, well, you can go 60 to 62 if you like, to get a better understanding of your nutrients, but if you're really savvy with your assignment, you're going to have a look at page 64, which has the Australian Dietary Guidelines, pretty much what I've just put here. You should be able to link this in some way when you're talking about why you've chosen what you've chosen in question two for your person who wants something to eat. So you might say, uh, we're having a look at here that we want a variety of nutritious food that meets our energy needs for the day. 
You might also have a look at the fact that we want five main food groups, something from the five main food groups each day. We might want to encourage people to drink water. Now, most drinks have water in it, so you can have a look at that as well. But we want eight to nine glasses of water a day. And let's not forget that we want to limit the intake of all the things that we like the most. So fats, he added salt, the sugars and the alcohol. Not that you guys are drinking alcohol, I'm sure. All right, let's have a look at the next one. So this is thing, yeah, where we've got a little triangle here and this is our scales. And I'm gonna draw a little box here. We're gonna put E, I, and that's gonna stand for energy intake. So essentially what we're eating throughout the day. So everything we eat has energy in it. Some things more than others, some things that our body can work with easier, so carbohydrates and fats, and some things that we, our body has trouble working with, such as dietary fibers. And then we have this other thing, which I'm gonna put as EX, which is the exercise that we do. Now you can see this, it's nice and balanced here. It's very um, level. So we're going to say that if they're balanced and if we're consuming as much energy as we're burning off during the day, then the argument stands that our body weight will be stable. What I want you to do is head over to page 65 of your textbook and complete the review and reflect task, which is really just asking you to make another one of these and imagine what's going to happen if our energy intake becomes more than our energy ex expenditure. So essentially, if we eat more food than we do movement, what's going to happen to our body weight? So have a go at that. Then, once you've had a go at that, head over to this website. You can find it on your textbook on page 68. You can find it on the school box page, uh, or you can just type in this link here. Find out how much energy you should be consuming to be able to match your activity levels during the day. Compare with someone next to you, have a bit of a chat, see what's going on. And finally, when you're choosing for question two, the choices that you've made in terms of what person's gonna have out of their meal, say you pick a pie and this and that, you need to be able to discuss whether that's going to um, be nutritious or what. Have a think about, did you choose something that had unsaturated fat over saturated fats? Did you choose a bread-based option such as a chicken wrap over a pastry option such as a pie? Have you got lean meat sitting in there or are they over-processed uh, meats? So over-processed means that they could have been, uh, or you've got things like your salamis and things like that, which have been put through different processes to make them last longer. And maybe what color is the food that you've chosen? Are there a variety of different colors or is it looking all a little beige? Have a look at page 74 for more suggestions to help you question two. And above all, do not forget that your assignment is due on Friday, March 17th, either as a hard copy or as a digital. It's up to you. You can submit it on Schoolbox, you can email it to me, uh, or you can hand me a hard copy either in class before, during, or on the day of March, Friday the 17th. So please don't waste this lesson and I will see you next lesson. Ciao.